Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man that is going to fight here. Bellator 233, Friday night, November the 8th, as he takes on EJ Brooks. It's Logan Story. Logan, appreciate your time. I guess, obviously, the, the big news surrounding you is is a brand new contract uh, that you signed with Bellator. Um, you know, kind of, uh, were you a free agent? And if so, how did this process play out for you? No. Um, you know, we <clears throat> we talked to Bellator and, you know, he just took our time and came back and we found a happy medium and, you know, we were excited to sign with them and stay with them. And they've done a great job um, taking care of me and I've done a great job for them, you know, going in there and winning fights. So, um, you know, we were both happy. So that's always a good thing when both sides are happy when they come to a new deal. Um, you know, when I, when I think of you, I think about uh, kind of some of the talk um, in that post fight scrum following your last fight where one of the reporters brings up Ed Ruth and you kind of say, you know what? Hey, I'm all down for it. Is that, is that still a fight that piques your interest? Um, you know, he just fought, uh, my training partner, Jason Jackson, you know, and, um, which a fight, I think Jason won. Um, it was a great fight, you know, it was a great fight. Um, you know, right now, I guess for me, I'm just, uh, looking at this fight ahead of me and whoever can get me to the top you know? Um, so I don't know where, where that, you know, where that fight with Ed puts me compared to maybe a fight with Lorenz Larkin or Korshkoff or guys like that, you know, I don't know what the difference is, you know? So but that's one of those things is, you know, I want to take care of this fight and then go from there, but I want to fight those top guys that get you to that title fight, you know? And so, um, for me, you know, if that's the Ed fight, then so be it. You know, it's fine. Um, and if it's someone else, then that's great too. As we're talking, we're one week out from this fight, and it was just last night that this matchup was revealed, which kind of makes me wonder uh, how how long have you known about this fight? Um, I found out not not too long ago that you know we, we had opponents change and switching around. So um, you know, I found out last week. So, um, like I said, at the end of the day, it's at the end, you know, it's the same thing. You got to go in there and you got to compete no matter who it is. So, um, you know, EJ is a tough guy and he's a, he's a good competitor and former division one wrestler. And so, you know, I know I have to, I have to come prepared and, you know, we've been preparing for a long time and it's been a while since my last fight. So. Yeah, I was going to bring that up of, you know, of course, obviously both of you with, with that amateur wrestling background, how, how would you, how would you compare and contrast how, how both of you did as, as collegiate wrestlers? Um, you know, I didn't, EJ is older than me, so I wasn't around when he was in college and I was still high school. Um, you know, I know he had some, you know, good wins and you know, I don't know how much he started. You know, I know he did well and he won a national junior college championship, I think. And, um, but, you know, he's, he's a he's a good wrestler. You know, he's a tough guy to take down, and he's hard to score on. Um, but, you know, my wrestling has gotten a lot better, even since when I was done with college. You know, I continue to work at those guys at the University of Minnesota and the <clears throat> world team guys and, you know, our RTC guys trying to make, you know, Olympic teams, you know. So my wrestling continues to improve, and now I get to add in, you know, commissions and, and all these other – other things with it and so that's great for me because i was a good scrambler and now there's a lot of other ways to score and you know hurt people in a fight compared to wrestling and obviously ej's been around uh he's fought here in the states he's fought overseas he's fought he's fought against you know legit competition um you know what are you and the team you know because we always hear that cliche of you know there's a you know, i like the, this fight because of whatever why, why do you like this fight for yourself um, I think I like this fight because he's not as, you know, as aggressive. And I know that when I come forward and, uh, you know, it'll be, a, it'll be a fight to, there might be more striking than usual, you know? So it's where you really get to test yourself and, you know, find out more about your style and, and who you are as a fighter. And at the same time, when you go in there and you do score and score those takedowns and dominate them on the ground, you know, that means a lot because he's that guy's a former division one wrestler, you know, and that just, you know, puts a little notch in your belt and you get, you know, that confidence of if I can do it to this guy, you know, I can do it to anybody in the world. And I know that already, you know, with who I train with and 
the, you know, great guys that I have as partners, you know, I know what I'm capable of, but, um, you know, it's, it's an exciting matchup for me to, to test my skills against a high level wrestler. Do you, because of where you train, do you ultimately feel that fight night is the easy night just based on, you know, the guys that you're going with on a day in and day out basis? Um, yeah, you know, uh, I train with some of the best guys in the world. I mean, the best guys in the world. And so, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you know that you're well prepared at the end of the day, you still got to go in there and you got to perform at a high level. You know, you, you still have to do that. And you only get one chance, you know, one chance at it. But, you know, I know where I'm at. I know that with the guys that I've uh, trained with, you know, for the last two and a half years I've been in Florida, you know, I know exactly where I'm at and where I need to improve and where, um, where I'm one of the best in the world at. So one of the things that I noticed on your Twitter profile, right in the header, um, you note hashtag more than a fighter. Um, what, what, what caused you to, to put that in your Twitter bio? Um, you know, we work with, um, American ethanol and seeds of change and, you know, they, they're doing a lot of great things, um, in other parts of the world. And, um, that was one of their, one of our things that, you know, all of us fighters, um, you know, the slogan they came up with and, you know, gave us that choice and, you know, after being around them and their fundraisers and all that, you know, they're doing great things. And, um, you know, we're all more than whatever your job is, you know? And so I thought that was true because, you know, I'm not just a fighter, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, all of us have lives outside of our jobs. And so I think, you know, especially some of the, the fans forget that, you know, and they go after fighters and this and that and say stuff and, and any sport, you know, people forget. Like, we're just regular people. This is our job. And like, sorry that, you know, it was a, you thought it was a boring fight, you know, so you're going to say you hate me and this and that and blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know, what? I, I don't care, but you know, some of these guys, man, people are just brutal. <laughs> yeah. I was listening to Vince Carter, the NBA player, talk about this on a podcast where he said, he's like, I tell all these young guys, you know, cause they naturally win halftime, you know, they all want to check their phone. They all want to go to Twitter. And he goes, I tell these guys, stay away from that, man. Cause that's just somebody sitting on their couch, just typing away. A- as you have progressed in the sport, are you finding yourself going, I'm just not even going to look at my mentions because. I know someone's going to say something to me that is just probably going to piss me off. Um, yeah, you know, some of those fights, you know, people obviously had stuff to say and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and to me, really, I don't care. You know, I really don't care um, what you think. And if you don't ever want to watch me again, then that's great. Don't watch me. You know, <laughs> that's your own choice. You know, I didn't make you do anything. So, um, but people just, they don't understand high level, high level wrestling. And they don't understand um, how hard it is to go in there and, you know, do those things that I do. And, you know, I think um, now with Khabib and Kamaru and, you know, Colby, all these guys, you know, Henry, Sahu, you know, they're all high level wrestling, you know, and, and they fight all some, you know, somewhat the same. Um, and so I think people are starting to realize, you know, more and more, is, you know, that, um, you know, that's, that's a skill that we put in 20 years of our life, you know, into, and we just happen to be really good at it. And sorry that, you know, you think it's boring sometimes, you know, you know, for, for maybe that, that fan that maybe they don't understand wrestling the way you understand it. And some of those fires you mentioned, understand wrestling, where would you point them to, to kind of get them to, to start understanding you know, would you just tell them, go watch as many, you know, wrestling meets as you can? How would you, what would be your advice to help them, you know, grow their knowledge of wrestling? Um, you know, I think, uh, as wrestling is one of those things, it's such a feel like feel sport that you have to feel what it's like to even wrestle a seven minute match. You know, it's one of the most exhausting things in the world, but most people have no idea, you know, what that feels like and how hard it is to take another highly trained fighter down and hold them down there and beat them up. Um, but yeah, you know, 
watching the NCAA tournament on ESPN, you know, come March is, I think it'd be great for people to see, you know, how, how good of athletes these college wrestlers are and how exciting it is. You know, I think a lot of people just don't understand. They don't understand the, you know, the scoring and the why something's such a big deal and, you know, little situations. Um, but, you know, watching the NCAA tournament, I think would be great for a lot of fans just to see what real high level wrestling is and where a lot of us fighters came from. But, of course, we're going to be able to see you fight here on Friday night, November the 8th, Bellator 233 from the Windstar World Casino in Thackerville, Oklahoma. Of course, the event will air live on Paramount Network and it will be simulcast on DAZN. Logan, I, I really appreciate time and I look forward to seeing the fight on Friday. All right. Thank you.